Hi, welcome, welcome to AZ Arts. Um, today we are going to do a, a little oil painting. Um, it's it's already primed and gessoed, ready to go, and um, going actually going it's going to be an anamor anamorphic anamorphic um, portrait um, character piece of like a, of a billy goat dressed in a suit and this is actually going to be um hanging up near our the new baby's um room um i'm actually we're due in two weeks with our fifth very excited about it and so um for our design and our um forte for the baby nursery it's very eclectic rustic um somewhat yeah it's non-traditional non-traditional type of look that we have going on and i i'll go back and do a spring, we're still working on the nursery so we'll probably be finished by definitely by the end of this week so but in the meantime i wanted to put a few pieces of like quick you know character pieces of anamorphic um paintings up of just something that's very eccentric and eclectic rustic um it's really um just given homage to um that whole late 19th century um children il illustrative um look of like when the willows and you know, Mr. Toad and Mr. Badger and so on. You get my drift. And you know, a lot of the children illustration books that were written for like, you know, Aesop Fables, that sort of thing. So, okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm just going to move my canvas. I have a kind of like a makeshift setup. My easel's over there in the corner. And I can't move it because it's really large and heavy. I just don't want to deal with it. Plus, this is, a, this is a really small kind of canvas. What I could do is I could actually just put it on the bed here. This is actually more comfortable for me. But you know what? We'll just leave it up for right now. When we get to like the really detailed parts, we can just lay it down. So one of the first things that we're going to start off with is uh, we're going to start, I'm gonna stain my canvas. This has already been primed. This is a, a canvas that I bought, already bought that was already pre-primed, pre-gessoed. So I don't have to go into priming it, but not so. Um, and these brushes here are a little bit, are these brushes that I got for Christmas, these oil brushes are, they're a bit new. Sometimes I, what I usually do is just use like a, a paper towel. Sorry for the noise. What I could do though, I'm just using this just to get it on the, the canvas. See this little piece here? Now, if you see here, look here at the corner, the upper right-hand corner. Um, I'm like, this is a really nice detail and mark that can kind of give you an indication of the look that we're going for for the nursery. Just very rustic, you know. Um, if you look at a lot of the, you know, antique, vintage, rustic furniture that a lot of people are doing nowadays, like go to Pinterest and you see like a lot of the chicken wire that is used for like the old vintage um, rustic um, furniture or people are actually going to going to Goodwill and buying like made, maybe mid-century modern and, uh, pieces that aren't that old. They're like 40 plus years old, but they're not like over 50. They're making their they go and buy them for like 10 bucks or whatever and um, $10 yeah. or just like really 
these cheap, cheap prices and they take them home and they just really rough them up, sand them down, sand them down completely and, you know, sand them down and, um, or just take like a paint, like, um, oh, there goes my, that's okay. I can still use that. Apologize for this is just kind of falling apart. Um, um, I'm going to pause this. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm continuing. I had a mishap with the easel. Painting on my bed because this is just not. This is the most comfortable place for me. Okay. Um, so I'm just kind of weighing this in. So I was what I was saying on the before the last video. Um, this little piece up here where it's kind of like chewed off, or I think one of the dogs may have gotten to it when it was in, in the garage or whatnot. It doesn't matter because I like this because it gives a character to the idea of what we're doing for the idea that we're doing for the, um, for the nursery. Um, like I was saying before, I was talking about a lot of people when they want to make things, they can't find a, an antique piece that maybe it's either way too expensive it's already, you know, 100 plus years old and um, they don't want to go through the agony of breaking their bank <laughs> or on a $500 piece of like furniture. Um, they go to, you know, go to Goodwill or some kind of thrift shop and buy some and buy something that's like $10. $10, $20, you know, what have you, take it home and just um, rust it, kind of rust it up with sandpaper, paint it, and then rust it up again with um, sandpaper. And um, yeah, so um, that's one of the ways that you can actually, I'm, I'm Um, you can actually get the quality that you want with, and then they go back over it with like a painting knife and um, let's see here sorry looking for my sienna's they go back over it with a painting knife and um, scratch it up to give it like that really old looking like quality you scratch it up you know with a painting knife or like a whatever I mean you can use like whatever you like to make give the quality that's like really old which I think is cool so that's kind of the look that we're kind of going for I, I don't want to do like oh this very refined Perfect payment. I apologize for the camera moving around a little much. Yeah, I just want to get the paint on there. Um, now, I'm at a point where I can actually take the tissue. I'm going to actually lay this down now. So I'm going to lay this down, turn the camera this way, get it cool, and I'm just going to kind of rub, take a tissue paper, it could be, you could use a paper towel, you can use um, um, you can use paper towel, you can use tissue, you can Kleenex, and the thing about it, when, if you use like a too soft of a toy, of a paper like I'm using now, I'm using um, like toilet paper right now. 
which I would not recommend because it, it the tissue kind of breaks off into these little pieces. But it's okay. I mean, it's not like you were doing something that's it's too soft. And I, I wouldn't, you know, do this on a regular basis, but for this little project, it doesn't really matter. I'm what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to smudge. The harder the paper, the better. If you even do it with newspaper, because it, what it does, it leaves really interesting marks on your the surface of your painting. Um, Um, it leaves really interesting marks on the, on the surface of your painting. And um, this really makes it um, just look more interesting. Uh, and, and so, I mean, like I said, we're staining this. And how I'm staining it, it's not, it's kind of, it's more or less traditional, how you would stain a painting that you really would want to show in your exhibition or a gallery not in a arts crafty way. Okay, I'm gonna put that back up there. Um, you can kind of see what's going on there. Um, see, I'm gonna give you a look here. If you come on, I wanna see here, there's like these little papers that's still there. See when it had broke these little pieces of paper break off the toilet paper that's okay you can kind of just you can fan those if you have a fan brush you can fan that off or I mean, like I said it doesn't matter because this is kind of like an art kind of craft painting that you're going to do and um, it's not going to be like some traditional I'm not approaching it the I'm not approaching the painting in a very traditional way. I'm just I'm getting the painting on there. Okay, so um, this is the ending part of my first stage of the painting. I will look forward to seeing you next time for our second part that we're going to cover. We're going to get into more of the outline of like the painting of the character of the billy goat and um yeah so i will see you then bye